Hello and welcome to Ludlow. Today actually is the 30th. A lot of the videos that I've recorded for today weren't uh, filmed today, but today is the 30th and my goodness, I'm cold. <laughs> there is snow flurries around me, so we might have to dart in, but um, I wanted to say happy St Andrew's Day to Lots of my uh, Scottish friends, obviously with a name like, uh, a maiden name like Bruce, as Scottish ancestry in our family. So, happy St Andrew's Day and thank you to everybody who has supported me over the last three years since my first books were published in 2014. So, I have a question from Annalise. Annalise is a lovely lovely lady who sends me loads and loads of uh, messages and I'm going to take this opportunity to say that if Annalise relaxed for just a moment she'd be a fantastic aromatherapist but she does spend her life worrying about things <laughs> and this is one of those instances <laughs> so this is a really good question though and I have to say I had to go searching for the answer and as ever Mr Tisserand was able to answer it from a blog post from 2012 but the fact that I had never come across the idea really um, in all my 25 years of training shows you how much Annalise worries about things. So she said, I, uh, do you have any thoughts about using essential oils on people with SSRIs? I've read that citrus oils could have a negative reaction. Okay, so we'll start with SSRIs, what are those? Um, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. So uh, what do they do? Well, they're antidepressants. Um, and just thinking about the physiology a little bit. So um, messages go through, down, down nerves, uh, and then across the synaptic gap and to another nerve. And this gap here is fed by chemicals and uh, things like neurotransmitters. One of those is serotonin. So the end of the nerve has a, like a, it's kind of curved, but obviously very, very small. And it has what's called the bouton. And the bouton's almost like a cupboard, cupboard full of magical things. And after the serotonin's done its job, obviously it can't just be left in the system or else we would just be a flood with millions and millions of neurotransmitters. So it gets re-uptaken um, and that's how it cleans up the system. Um, but for some people, that reuptake happens too fast, and so the antidepressants um, stop that reuptake. Um, now, the question that Annalise wants to know is how would um, citrus oils affect this? And I think that one of the things that people are often worried about is something called serotonin syndrome. Um, where... And serotonin syndrome in itself isn't that a, a complex or unusual... Um, thing to happen it happens a lot um i think about 15 percent of uh, deaths can uh, are related to ssris are from serotonin um syndrome so they would what happens is um like an ssri will mix with something else and so you have too much serotonin in the system so usually you'll think it's things like ecstasy or cocaine or lots of street drugs or perhaps having two different types of ssris together which is not a very clever thing to have prescribed but if somebody does then that that will happen so she's quite right from the point of view that um, citrus oils certainly improve levels of serotonin would they push them to the levels of having serotonin syndrome which I mean I always think it's a bit like um, how I feel on caffeine you know they're hyper alert they um, their the temperature goes very very high uh, higher than I think 41.1 um, degrees centigrade so really high um, that um, pupils dilate and they're jittery and obviously with um, such high temperature you can have problems with convulsions people have seizures or um, I think um, some kind of muscle wasting as I remember but I can't can't really remember that very closely but um, in answer to your question I think it's really really unlikely that citrus oils will do it and that's not to say that no essential oils will do it um, because 
there is a possibility that oils with um, eugenol and myristin um, can interact with um, monoamine uh, inhibitors, which is um, a different type of SSRI. So your oils that you might be um, worried about are things like clove or nutmeg or um, cinnamon, bay if you use bay, it's not a very uh, commonly used oil, but they can be possible interactions. But I think it's really worth um, saying you do need to relax a bit, it's really unlikely. There's a big difference between possibility and probability. I wouldn't be in a situation where I would say I'm definitely not going to use those oils on somebody on SSRIs. I would use small dilutions and I would watch carefully to see if something happened. But um, I think it's very difficult to learn something like aromatherapy just from um, books and from the internet. Um, I was doing a calculation this morning of how many hours sort of face-to-face -face hours we had to do for our diploma and I think it worked out as around about 250 and those 250 hours of being with somebody who knows what they're talking about makes a really big difference and I would really recommend to all of you to try and get to go to some conventions to some conferences to some workshops and learn from your peers um, because it does help you to stop overreacting about things um, that seem really, really scary and actually, the, to put it into com uh, context, um, they say that 4% of, uh, of males are psychopaths. 4%, that's really high, isn't it? Um, are all psychopaths uh, serial killers? Well, you're quite unlucky if you meet a serial killer, but really, the odds are 4% you're going to meet a psychopath, aren't you? But if you put that into all train, but if you work in a prison, then the odds are very much higher that you're going to meet a psychopath who has become a serial killer. So if you were working with people who were always on SSRIs, then the odds are going to be higher. Um, that you're going to have a problem but in gen genuinely no it's it's not a problem I, I would uh, it's certainly not going to be a problem with citruses I can't see I mean we don't know every action that an oil does by any stretch of the imagination people will be finding them forever but to, but no not citruses but um, yeah just use small dilutions of things like clove um, if you feel you really have to use clove I mean the other thing is why can't you just use a different oil um, or certainly cinnamon can easily be replaced with something else so i hope that helps and um annalise <laughs> please darling start trusting your instincts and calm down um i hope you don't mind me saying that she's honestly everybody she's so clever at what she does so clever and but she does worry annalise darling over the months you have really earned this book that i want to send to you so Please PM me your um, postal address, which, if I remember rightly, is in India. So it's going to cost me quite a lot of postage. But my darling, you've deserved this. And I really want to say thank you for all the support you've given me. And, uh, yeah, use some le lemon oil and forget about it. Or actually one more piece of information I could give you about that. If there is a horrible situation where somebody does have serotonin, um, syndrome god forbid that ever happen but if they did it has been found that a five percent dilution of lavender will reverse it in rats <laughs> so how useful i think uh, that will be i don't know but if there it does seem to be something happening whack some lavender on <laughs> okay all right then see you soon bye